thank you so much for choosing to watch It Is Written. You know, we are in the second part of a series on depression, the way out. You know, almost every family around the world is touched by depression or some type of mental health disorder. At It Is Written, we are committed to providing a message of hope and wholeness. And part of that wholeness is experiencing life to its fullest in the area of health. And I am thrilled to have with me in studio Dr. Neil Nedley to help us address this subject of depression. Dr. Nedley, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Great to be here. You know, Dr. Nedley, you've spent 27 years in an, as an internal medicine doctor and specializing in mental health. As we talk about depression, as we have this discussion about depression, what are the common treatments for depression? Well, the most common treatment is actually medicating it. Uh, but the unfortunate part about medication is that it has its limitations. Uh, Nature Magazine just came out with a whole issue on depression, and they stated that we really haven't made any major advancements in medicine in the last 50 years in treating this disease as far as how effective it is. Only about 28% of people actually go into remission while taking a medicine uh, as, as its sole treatment. And if they do go into a remission while taking a medicine, it's much more likely they're using additional modalities such as we'll be speaking about today. Uh, but medications are not the cure-all for this condition. So I want to be careful to be too critical, but I think I heard you say 28% experience uh, remission of depression by going the traditional route of medication. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been a medical doctor for a long time. If only 28% of a orthopedic surgeon's surgeries were successful, in the medical community, how would that be looked upon? It would be looked on very poorly. And that's why Nature Magazine dedicated this whole issue to depression, uh, Chris. They actually stated that we are doing better with the treatment of cancer than we are with the treatment of depression. In other words, you are more likely to be cured from cancer than you are from depression today with the traditional treatments that are available. And that, plain and simply, is not acceptable. So traditional medicine uh, or the typical uh, course that is used to treat depression is working in a small percentage of people. And, and we want to be very careful here. We're not telling someone to drop all their medication or anything no, like that. And we'll have right. more conversations about that. Yeah. We're just trying to look at the, at, the, at the statistical reality that only about 25%, 28% of the people are having success with traditional medicine. So if only 28% are experiencing success of having remission of depression through medication, is there any hope, is there anything else that we can do to treat depression? Well, absolutely. Uh, what we should be doing is looking for the causes of depression and then reversing those causes, and that's gonna work far better than the traditional approaches. Now, I know some of our viewers are gonna be very happy because you just said the causes of depression. And in our last show together, and by the way, if you missed that last show, you can go to the YouTube channel for It Is Written, youtube.com forward slash IIW Canada, and there you can find our previous show. But Dr. Nedley, in that show, we talked about the causes and we were running out of time and you went over them real briefly. And I know some people were left wanting more. What are the causes of depression? Well, there's genetic causes. There are developmental causes, how we were raised. And then there's lifestyle causes, not being on a regular exercise program not regularly being exposed to bright enough light every day, not regularly being exposed to fresh air. Those are lifestyle causes. Okay. Then there are circadian rhythm causes. This has to do with our sleep-wake cycles. Depressed people tend to be late-night people, uh, and they go to bed late, and they normally have sleep issues, and then they get up late, and they feel like a zombie. And in reality, that can be corrected by our body clocks are set by light therapy. So light therapy at about 6 a.m. 
and then switching over to early to bed, early to rise. It actually is called the new Prozac in one of the recent studies, showing it'll decrease negative thoughts and you can actually phase shift yourself within seven days to be an early to bed, early to rise person. And so that, that's crucial. Yes. Then uh, addiction hits, whether you're addicted to, you know, um, gambling or uh, a substance addiction like alcohol or tobacco or whatever the addiction is, uh, pornography, um, technology addictions are pretty um, common. Uh, that will be a hit. That can be a cause. And then the sixth are nutrition causes. What we put into our body actually gets turned into neurotransmitters, and so nutrition plays a crucial role. And I'm going to hit the pause button there. Sure. You know, one of the one of the things we're committed to here at Is Written Canada is a message of hope and wholeness. And and every week we feature a live healthy segment with with Bev Haynes. And uh, today on our live healthy segment, I actually several weeks ago joined Bev in the kitchen to make uh, a healthy recipe. And so you can look back at those live healthy segments to find some healthy recipes. And Dr. Nedley and I are going to talk more about uh, about nutrition as it relates to depression in in both this show and some later shows. So you won't want to miss that. And so I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but you were talking about those causes. So after nutrition, what's a what's another cause? There are toxic causes, you know, too much mercury, too much lead, too much pesticides uh, can be a cause. The eighth are social causes, and these normally are social isolation causes. Things that uh, tend to produce isolation socially can be a cause. Uh, that's to differentiate social complications of the disease. Depression always has social complications, sure. but not always a social cause. Then there are medical conditions like thyroid conditions, post-traumatic head injury. There's even viral conditions like hepatitis C that can bring it about. And then there are frontal lobe causes. The frontal lobe is the seat of spirituality, morality, the will. It's the analytical portion of our brain. Certain forms of entertainment, certain forms of music can suppress the frontal lobe of the brain. If we're not actually thinking on the abstract level on proverbs or reading spiritual material, that can suppress the frontal lobe of the brain. And so uh, it turns out four categories of causes and you'll have depression or anxiety essentially. It's not just one, it's usually a combination of four out of those ten. Those were ten categories of causes that we just mentioned. And if we find out what the categories are in the patient and get them down to two or less, their depression is gone and they actually don't have to medicate it necessarily. Okay, so I, I want to review that just a little bit because I'm, I'm sure our viewers just caught this. There are ten causes, generalized causes of depression now, of those 10 causes, how many of them are able to be addressed without medication? Seven to eight. Seven to eight. Mm -hmm. So practically speaking, someone at home viewing right now, experiencing depression, seven to eight of those causes can be addressed without the use of medication. Correct. And we're going to be talking about how to address some of those Issues, but that's real hope, Dr. Nedley, that you can provide by saying seven to eight of these can be addressed without any medication at all. That's right. Can just be reversed by making some simple changes in our life. And there are a couple of words there that you use that I really like to hear reversed and simple. Yes. Uh, we're not talking about complicated formulas and things like that, we're talking about simple things that will actually help reverse our symptoms of depression or our causes of depression rather that will actually help us feel better about our life. Yes. Now, you have treated scores of patients with severe depression and anxiety and many of them were cured. And I'm gonna ask you this question and we could go for hours by asking this question, but maybe talk generally speaking, how did some of them experience, or how was this accomplished, that they experienced actual reversal of depression? Well, essentially, they became educated on how the brain works. Uh, and of course, we provided that education uh, through two different ways. One, we have a community-based program 
um, where it's just simply a mental health education program that you can go and watch DVDs and go through a workbook exercise and have a facilitator a group coach uh, the, the participants and many have been cured simply through that approach but then the more severe cases that you know of someone who's so dysfunctional that even a community-based program would not work um, those actually come to our center and uh, they will then actually have a mentally healthy lifestyle imposed on them because they're living uh, with us. Sure. And so uh, we'll actually have them go through those simple changes in just 10 days uh, and we'll see a dramatic difference uh, in many of those individuals in just 10 days will walk away cured from their depression and anxiety. So you have the, the, the on-site where people can come, mm -hmm. but then the community-based program, and, and at the end of the show, we're going to make an offer where people can get an introductory DVD and actually learn more about that community-based program as well as that residence program. Mm -hmm. And you talked about, as you were talking about the causes, one of the things you mentioned was physical exercise. Mm -hmm. Okay, Let's talk a little bit about that. What type of physical exercise do you recommend for depressed people? One that's going to get them fit. Okay. And often uh, we'll use intermittent training to get an unfit person fit. And that is they'll use vigorous exercise alternating with rest. Normally they're exercising a minute, resting about 40 seconds. And then a minute, and then resting 30 to 40 seconds. And uh, as they do that, the, the entire time, including the rest time, about an hour, um, they'll actually be able to get more fit day by day. And within seven days, we'll start to see a response in those individuals just from the exercise alone. Now, why are we seeing a response in those individuals? What, what's exercise doing for a person uh, to help them uh, feel better and not have that depression? Well, it's improving their circulation. It's also improving the circulation to the brain. And it's actually improving serotonin levels. There's brain chemistry changes taking place. Okay. Serotonin levels are going up, dopamine levels are going up, and norepinephrine levels are going up. And uh, those are three important neurotransmitters for the brain to be able to function well. Okay, now when we talked about exercise, you said do whatever it takes to get fit. Yeah. Let's make it just a little bit more practical for our viewer that's watching right now. What are some, you know, uh, is walking good, is running good? Maybe talk about some specific exercises and, and speaking to an audience in Canada where a good portion of Canada is in severe, snowy, cold weather, uh, a good chunk of that year. What, what's some practical exercise that can, somebody can do right after they watch the show today? Brisk walking is a great exercise. And uh, I'm familiar with the cold. I spent the first 18 years of my life in Detroit. And uh, I actually teach there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. And so dress up for it and get out there and exercise. It's better to actually do it outdoors where we have fresh air uh, if we can do that. And uh, actually just walking briskly for 60 minutes can produce a significant effect, uh, again, within seven days. If you want to run to get more fit, that's, that's great. That'll even help more. Uh, but, uh, but walking is something that most people can do right off the bat. Okay. And for that person, and you talked about this in the last show, one of the, one of the, the, the results of depression is often the manifestation of fibromyalgia. So there might be somebody watching that says, okay, I'd love to walk briskly, but I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't even get up and walk. I'm, I'm in so much pain. What would you recommend to someone who's in a situation like that where maybe they can't walk briskly? What kind of exercise could that person do? Well, uh, if they could join a club where they could actually have a swimming pool. Often the individuals with fibromyalgia or advanced arthritis, um, they can get into a therapeutic pool and move well. And so I would recommend in that case, um, uh, some other type of exercise that fits them where they can get fit. Okay, and so exercise is going to tackle one of the causes of depression, uh, a, a lack of physical activity, mm -hmm. getting out, getting active, mm -hmm. getting fit in whatever, uh, in whatever works. But then you talked about the issue of sleep. 
Yes. So let's talk a little bit about that. And now to our viewer watching, don't go to sleep now. We, we, <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about sleep, but now's not the time for it. So what's happening with sleep cycles? What's happening with sleep? And how can somebody sleep better? Well, you, the rejuvenating sleep, you're making melatonin at night. And serotonin uh, comes about in the daytime as in, in response to light. So we actually get better sleep when we're exposed to brighter light in the daytime. And uh, then when we go to bed early, we make more melatonin, double the amount of melatonin than if we go to bed, you know, for instance, after midnight. And the melatonin can help our concentration the next day. It can actually just make us be in a happier mood as a result of getting that rejuvenated sleep. And so there are certain things that can help. Getting enough tryptophan in the diet will actually help you sleep better. So nutrition and sleep have a role to play with each other. For instance, getting more exercise that we just mentioned will help you get better sleep. But we tell individuals, particularly depressed individuals aren't used to going to bed early, uh, for them to find a comfortable position and hold it for 20 minutes. And then if they haven't slept, find another position and hold it for 20 minutes and then do it a third time. And if they're still awake after the third time, we allow them to read, not off a computer screen. That's going to ruin their circadian rhythms. They need to read a book, read the Bible, for instance, read some Psalms and Proverbs. And, um, and then when they start getting micro sleeps where they notice they're losing their concentration, then they can try it again and chances are they'll be able to go to sleep. But going to bed at the same time, getting up at the same time, or around the same time will help a great deal after seven days of improving their sleep efficiency. Okay, so getting to bed early. Give me an idea. What time is early? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock and yeah. getting up early. What time is early to get up? Uh, get up getting up early would be like five o'clock. Okay. Yeah. So early to bed, early mm -hmm. to rise, mm -hmm. get your rhythms back together, and that's going to help in a very practical way. You're going to sleep better, mm -hmm. and and we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more. And and in the in the DVD that we offer, there's a little bit inf of information on that, so mm -hmm. we can get into more of that information. Another thing you talked about is nutrition, dietary mm -hmm. changes. Mm -hmm. Now we could again we could spend a whole show talking about dietary changes, but mm -hmm. what are some dietary changes that people can make to help in their depression? Omega three really helps the brain and helps the frontal lobe, and a lot of people are deficient in it. Uh, this is where chia seeds, flax seeds, spinach, green soybeans, mature soybeans not so good on omega-3, but green soybeans are an excellent um, source. Walnuts are a pretty good source. And so getting the omega-3 levels boosted up will help the brain. Getting more tryptophan into the brain. Tryptophan is the least abundant amino acid. And you need tryptophan with carbs. Don't get it from turkey. Turkey doesn't have the carbs. You have protein and fat, but no, no carbs. You need tryptophan with carbs to get the tryptophan into the brain to be able to make serotonin. And those are foods like um, tofu, uh, pumpkin seeds, actually whole wheat. Um, gluten flour, for instance, has a lot of tryptophan. Uh, and uh, those type of sources will actually help. Okay, so more tryptophan, more omega-3s, practical mm -hmm. things that I can do right when we're done with this show, eat some more walnuts, eat some pumpkin seeds, so on and so forth. You named off of several things there yeah. that can actually help a person start feeling better. And how, how, how quickly might a person expect, as they introduce these things into their diet, how how quickly might they see, start seeing some results? Most um, treatments for depression, including medicine, take about a week before you start noticing a benefit. Okay. So some will notice a benefit within three days, but um, certainly within seven days. Okay. Now we're going we're gonna to get into some more treatments in our, in our next show because we're starting to run out of time. But I do want to probe one question in our last few minutes together. Is there a, re a role for religion or spirituality in treating depression? Absolutely. The frontal lobe of the brain is down in virtually every depressed patient. And the frontal lobe is the seat of spirituality, morality, and the will. And so in our treatment program, we don't neglect the frontal lobe like most of psychiatry does. I'm sad to say that even though it's well known that the frontal lobe is down with depression, the frontal lobe is largely ignored by psychology and psychiatry today. And this is an area that can be improved, for instance, by studying the book of Daniel and analyzing how 
each chapter goes from disappointment to appointment and there's a spiritual key that transfers that story and just adopting those spiritual keys will enhance the frontal lobe of the brain and help with depression and so some very practical steps that addressed at least three of the issues that we talked about or four of the issues mm -hmm. getting some exercise mm -hmm. changing our diet slightly mm -hmm. getting better sleep Mm -hmm. and then getting involved into some type of spiritual practice, reading the book of Daniel, reading Psalms, reading Proverbs. Mm -hmm. And four of that's four of the ten causes of depression. That's right. That as soon as this show, I mean, it's being addressed while they're watching this show. That's right. Because they're getting the education. But as soon as this show is over, someone can go and address four of those ten causes and begin to expect to see some results in their own life in the next few days exactly, and coming weeks. Exactly. Dr. Nedley, this is good news. Yeah. This is very good news because what it means is that depression is not the end road. That's right. There is, in fact, a way out. Yes. It's hard to believe that we're out of time. <laughs> I thank you for joining me today. I'm going to have prayer now to pray for those that are watching this show that they might find their way out. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you have given us information to help us find a way out of depression. So, dear Father, please be with us and help us to trust in you fully and find that way out. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.